Greetings, I'm James, a 32-year-old. My mother-in-law, for some reason, didn't like me for a long time. One might think it was because I was taking her beloved daughter away, but she doesn't treat her other kids' partners like that. I always felt she had a personal issue with me, which hasn't been properly confirmed to this day. I'm glad that, at least, I found a way to deal with her annoying behavior. Let me tell you the story from the start. Sarah, my mother-in-law, and I clashed all the time like oil and water or fire and ice. She was really good at bothering me with her indirect comments and disapproving looks, whether it was about my job or my cooking. Once, we argued about a rug. Yes, a simple rug. Here's how it happened. Sarah said, James, I can't believe you didn't get the rug I wanted for the living room. It's like you never listened to me. James, Sarah, this is my home, and I want the freedom to pick the furniture. The rug I chose is good. Sarah, good? It's ugly. Your taste is terrible. This is just one more example of how you're not good at things. James, stop, Sarah. I'm tired of you always making me feel small and pointing out my flaws. I work hard for our family, and I should get some respect. Sarah, respect is something you have to deserve, James, and you haven't done anything to deserve it. You're just not helpful in so many ways. James, I can't talk about this at the moment. Our talks always followed a similar pattern, where Sarah would argue about unimportant things, and I would end up leaving without continuing the conversation. I honestly thought she might have a mental issue because her actions seemed irrational, and it appeared she took pleasure in getting me upset. I tried my hardest not to let her see that it bothered me. I often seek comfort and understanding from my wife, Victoria. Victoria and I face the world as a team, but when it comes to her mother, she feels torn between loyalty to me and family ties. Victoria listens to my concerns and offers comfort, but deep down, we both recognize that Sarah's ways are harmful. One day, Victoria approached me with exciting news. She had been thinking about our situation with her mom and believed she found a way to improve our relationship dynamic. I was not expecting any surprises and asked her what she had in mind. Victoria suggested a family vacation for all of us, thinking it would be a great opportunity to spend time together in a fun and lively environment, away from daily stress. She hoped it might help improve the strained relationship between Sarah and me. I expressed my doubts, questioning if a vacation could really fix things given the strained relationship. Victoria assured me that Sarah didn't hate me, and this was a chance for us to reconnect, create positive memories, and find common ground. Sarah seemed genuinely excited about the idea when Victoria mentioned it to her. Surprised by Sarah's enthusiasm, I considered it an unexpected opportunity for a fresh start. Victoria encouraged us to focus on enjoying ourselves and building a bond during the vacation. I hesitated but agreed, willing to give it a shot for the chance to improve our relationship. Victoria appreciated my willingness and believed the vacation could bring us closer together, making it a memorable experience for everyone. Though excited about the idea of a vacation, I couldn't shake my worries, knowing Sarah had a history of trying to provoke me. However, I did commit to giving it a try, so that's exactly what I intended to do, step by step. Yet my initial uncertainty turned into complete skepticism. Sarah, typically not so enthusiastic, surprised me with her excitement, providing ideas and even volunteering to help with the planning. This abrupt change of attitude set off alarms in my mind. Sarah had never displayed such enthusiasm before, and it left me uneasy. I couldn't shake the sense that something questionable was happening. Despite this, I held on to my suspicions. Frankly, I felt remorseful for harboring these doubts. I didn't want to introduce negativity to our trip or distress Victoria by being distrustful, so I kept it to myself. Yet, whether you label it intuition or sheer luck, I eventually unraveled the truth, validating my suspicions. But let's not jump the gun. In the midst of uncertainty, Victoria and I readied ourselves for the journey, hoping the new surroundings would bring the calm we sought. Two weeks flew by, and our trip loomed closer. We packed our bags, checked our passports twice, and eagerly looked forward to the upcoming adventure. Notably, concerning the passports, a nagging feeling warned me of impending trouble. Later that night, Sarah called when Victoria was absent, prompting me to pick up the phone on her behalf. Hey, dear, please place your passports on the table tomorrow. Oh, hey, Victoria's temporarily away. What's going on? James, I was hoping to see Victoria. Anyway, I just want to remind both of you to leave your passports on the table to avoid forgetting them. Why? The trip is still four days away at least. Leaving them on the table this early might cause issues. I believe it's better to keep the passports in our bags for now. Victoria stepped into the room, feeling a bit of unease in the air. Hey James, what's happening? Your mom gave me a ring and I figured I'd pick up. Sarah was telling us to remember the passports, but maybe it's better to keep them in our bags. 
Leaving them on the table might not be the smartest move. We could accidentally bump into them or end up forgetting them. Sure, James. That sounds like a better idea. We wouldn't want to take any chances of misplacing them or causing unnecessary problems. Sarah, visibly frustrated with our responses, eventually expressed, Okay, get the passports, especially yours, James. You're forgetful. I'm sure you'll forget it unless it's right in front of you. Confused, I inquired, Why do you specifically need my passport, and why would you say that? Sarah replied, Because you're always absent-minded and careless. I can't rely on you to remember important things, so it's better if you just leave them out. I defended myself. Sarah, that's not fair. I've been responsible and capable of looking after my belongings. All right, let's pause for a moment. We all want the trip to be smooth, and we don't want any unnecessary arguments. Mom, we value your concern, but I'm on the same page as James about keeping the passports in our bags for now. If you don't have your passports ready tomorrow, then count me out of this trip, Sarah warned. Victoria and I exchanged puzzled looks. Why would she make such a needless threat? I was done with the conversation and didn't want to encourage Sarah by pushing her to comply. Victoria, being the more agreeable one, decided to do just that. The call concluded with Victoria agreeing to lay out the passports as instructed, and I felt disappointed that Victoria gave in so easily. You see, the reason she often gets upset about trivial matters is because she believes you'll consistently support her, I explained to Victoria. I disagree. I don't always support her. I just aim to steer clear of unnecessary conflicts. You understand her temperament. However, Victoria, it feels like she's exerting control over everything. She manipulates situations and anticipates us to conform to her desires. We shouldn't allow her to control our lives continuously. It's not easy. James, dealing with my mom is really hard for me. She's always been like this, and I've figured out how to handle her emotional moments. It's simpler to go along with her instead of disagreeing. I get it, Victoria. I'm sorry for what you're going through, but there has to be a moment when we say, that's it. We can't keep giving up our joy just to please her. I simply want to enjoy this vacation, James, without any conflict spoiling it. Let's go with her suggestion for now and remain optimistic. We can address any outcomes later. Sure, Victoria. If that's what you prefer, I'll go along. Just keep in mind that we can't keep supporting her actions indefinitely. Victoria and I discussed this issue back and forth. It was challenging to acknowledge that my tense connection with my mother-in-law was genuinely impacting my relationship with Victoria at that moment. Constantly arguing about her instead of typical marital issues like finances or chores was disheartening. The argument dragged on late into the night. Victoria, maybe we should consider canceling the trip. It seems like Sarah doesn't want us to have a good time. With the trip just three days away and having planned it for a long time, I was determined not to let her spoil it for us. We're going on that vacation, and we're going to make the most of it. Both of us recognized the challenging situation we were in. Despite my reluctance, I agreed to accommodate Sarah's demands for the sake of a peaceful vacation. Deep inside, I knew it wasn't a lasting fix, but I was optimistic the journey would give us a chance to reconnect and gather strength together, as initially planned. The next day at work, I tried to concentrate on my tasks and set aside the tension caused by Sarah's constant presence. Everything went well until I got a FaceTime request from her. I hesitated but decided to see what she wanted. As I picked up the call, my heart raced when I saw Sarah's face contorted into a sinister expression I had never seen before. It gave me a shiver, and I prepared myself for whatever was about to happen. Well, if it isn't James, I'm actually surprised that you answered my call. Honestly, I feel the same way. Is there something on your mind, Sarah? Oh, not much. I just wanted to share some thoughts with you. Go ahead, I'm all ears. I really don't like you, James. It's something I've always felt. I think you're not a good person, and I can't stand seeing you succeed. Sarah, this isn't new information, but I'd like to understand why you feel that way. What did I do to upset you? It hurts to see you happy with her. You both always seem to be having a good time. What's there to enjoy? It seems like you don't want our daughter to be happy. You're not being a good mother. Me, pathetic. I'm just trying to look out for our daughter. You make her believe the world has no problems. She's too cheerful and innocent. You're turning her into someone ignorant and clueless, just like you. Sarah, what you're saying doesn't really make sense. It seems like you've always tried to bring me down with the way you talk to me. It's quite clear that you have a strong interest in me. Sarah's expression shifted from hostility to embarrassment. It was as if I surprised her with something she didn't expect me to mention, causing her to blush at my words. Hold on, are you actually infatuated with me? Well, I'm not sure what you're getting at. What exactly are you trying to express? Oh, wow, Sarah, do you have romantic feelings for me? 
What? Are you serious? That's absurd. Why would I feel that way about you of all people? That's just nonsense. I don't even think about you. Well, why are you so fixated on bringing me down? It feels like you're acting like a schoolgirl with a crush. You know how it goes. When someone liked you back then, they treated you poorly. This situation gives off the same vibes. If I'm wrong, let me know, because I just can't figure out why you dislike me so much. To be honest, Sarah, it's pretty disturbing that you have romantic feelings for your sister-in-law. But what I wanted to express before you interrupted me is that I don't have any romantic feelings for you, so just let it be. Then why is it so hard for you to accept the idea of Victoria and me being together? What's the issue with us being happy? Please stay silent and avoid talking. I came here for a reason, and despite your strange accusations, I will continue with added confidence. While Sarah spoke, I saw her showing a passport to the camera. I was amazed to see a flickering flame from a lighter in her other hand. Feeling my confusion, she gave me that playful smile from the start of our conversation and then lit the passport on fire. She laughed, but I stayed quiet, looking at her with a combination of disgust. She took pleasure in her wicked laughter, savoring the chaos she had unleashed. James, my disdain for you is so strong that I was ready to turn your passport into ashes. It's not advisable for you to proceed with this journey. Think about parting ways with my daughter and seeking someone more suitable, someone superior to you. I haven't expressed a simple dislike for you. I'm definitely not fixated on you. You're simply misguided. All right, fine. Why aren't you angry at this moment? Did you not witness my recent actions? I incinerated your passport, you foolish person. Yes, I noticed what you did, but there's a mistake. The document you burned wasn't my passport. With surprise in her voice, I took out my passport from my laptop bag to prove that I still had it. Look, my passport is safe and sound. Interestingly, when you accuse people of forgetfulness, they tend to be more careful. I always carry my passport because I had a feeling something might happen. Remember, I advised you to keep your passports out, which is why I'm at your place. I regret not falling for your revenge plan, Sarah. What were you thinking? Why would you even consider such an action? If it wasn't mine, then whose passport did I see burning? Sarah's is here. Yours should have been here. It's funny you brought that up because, if you recall, you left your passport here three weeks ago when you came back from Las Vegas. I thought you thought you had it with you the whole time. It made me smile to see Sarah's face go from being made to surprised and then feeling awkward as she slowly figured out the passport. She destroyed was hers. You're the one who got me into this, dear, she declared. I didn't force you to do anything. You're the person who said to take the passports out. I took out all four and placed them on the table in the entrance area as you requested. However, I had a feeling you might be planning something, so I held on to mine. To be honest, you should take responsibility for this. Why didn't you verify the names on the passports? I actually did. I checked the first passport, which belonged to Victoria. After that, I assumed the second one was yours, so I didn't feel the need to check it. I completely forgot that I had left my own passport at your place. Sarah grumbled about how unfair everything seemed. But just like in those movies, she turned out to be another villain with a flawed plan that went wrong. It was like she set herself up for trouble, as the fancy folks say. I found it amusing as she kept on crying and shouting. See, Sarah, you underestimated me. I won't let you mess up my life or my relationship with Victoria. Your reign of terror stops here. Do you think you've triumphed? This is far from the end, James. I'll find a way to break you six apart. Well, good luck with that. It looks like you're too busy creating your wicked scheme. My spouse and I are all set for a break we really need, and we're super thrilled about it. We aim to make the most of our time. However, there's someone who seems unhappy about it, wondering why we're allowed to have a good time and saying it's not right. Despite the negativity, I find it amusing how my wife is confused and frustrated. Eventually, I decide to stop the unnecessary drama by ending the car ride early. I feel satisfied with how things turned out because it was her own actions that caused her problems. Even after the call ends, she remains angry with herself for her mistakes. In search of proof to back up what I'm saying, I go to the security guard at my workplace and ask for video evidence from my office. Even though it goes against the company rules, he eventually gives it to me once he realizes how crucial the situation is. Now armed with evidence of Sarah's dishonesty, I tell my wife everything, and she gets really angry. Amidst the surprising discovery, I must note that I had previously cautioned her about her mom's unpredictable actions. Despite being upset, my wife is amazed to find out that her mom may have had a bit of a crush on me. This revelation clarifies why she has been unfriendly towards me and tried to spoil our trip by burning my passport. Both my wife and I share a bitter chuckle at the ridiculousness of the situation. My wife gives her mom a call, 
venting her frustration with vivid words and scolding her for the foolish behavior. Sarah tried to deny everything, making Victoria even angrier. Victoria revealed the video I got from work. Once again, Sarah was too surprised and embarrassed to respond clearly, showing she was caught in a lie. They argued back and forth, with Sarah trying to trick and Victoria scolding her for each inconsistency. The call with her mother ended on a sour note, and Victoria promised not to talk to her anymore. During our holiday, Victoria and I encountered an unexpected situation, which was challenging considering we had received surprising news just five days prior. Despite feeling a bit silly for not realizing certain things about her mother earlier, my wife tried to lighten the mood by joking about her mother accidentally burning her passport. While the vacation wasn't flawless, it still had its enjoyable moments. I kept my distance from Sarah due to her peculiar attitude towards me, and Victoria stayed true to her word by not answering any calls, texts, or emails from her mother. Sarah tried to get our family involved by saying we were not following the rules and convincing them to support her. Luckily, we hadn't shown the video to the other family members, so it was her story versus ours. Victoria and I are thinking about whether we should tell the rest of the family what we found out. What's your opinion? Should we keep it to ourselves or let everyone know about Sarah's actions?